So I'm going to de-embed this fixture. Uh, we're going to assume that this is a horrible trace. Actually, this is one of our uh, test boards with some very big uh, con discontinuities. If we're looking at the distance and ohms here, uh, we're seeing uh, 70 ohms here and then down to 25 ohms. I've uh, kind of scaled this already to fit in. Um, the other thing is we look, we can get the S parameters here. And if we want to look at the frequency domain, I can add a new chart here. You can add the S11, the S21, um, and so forth. S12, S22, and we can get those all on the chart. So this information is used. Um, and at that point, we can go and go ahead and, and save uh, export S parameters. Uh, so I've got DUT1 set up. I'm going to select them all, and then I'm going to browse and, uh, and save. So I'm going to save that. And that's going to be the basis for what we're going to de-embed. Um, and hopefully, we'll start with a clean signal. Uh, we'll see what it looked distorted, all connected, and then we'll fix that up. So now I'm going to look at trace de-embedding and how powerful that can be. Um, right now we have a signal going through our TD, one of our old demo boards that has some really bad discontinuities. And I've captured the S parameters already using our uh, the uh, 86100D TDR. Um, so I've characterized that and now I'm going to add that in. So this is what we're starting with. We have a fairly closed eye. And when we uh, add measurement, we go to eye just so we can see eye height, eye width, apply, and OK. And let's just get those up there so we can see them eye height and eye width. So we're getting a 41 picosecond width and a 59. We can just double check. Um, I'm going to track the markers just to see where those measurements are being taken. So you're, it's rough. You know, we're, we're just going to eyeball it for now uh, because the results are pretty dramatic. <coughs> in any case, um, so this is uh, probably as good as it gets. Um, and if we look at the, uh, uh, if we scroll through here and just look at the signal itself, um, you know, what it looks like. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set up, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to go in and run it, uh, our tool for de-embedding or removing the effects of that fixture. So I'm going to do a two-port uh, de-embedding. Um, I'm going to go into the setup and I'm going to create a transfer function from a model. So in here we have application preset. We're going to remove the insertion loss or fixture of cable. I mean we can do something as dramatic as this but I don't need to do that. Um, I'm actually only going to do remove the loss of one. So we have our measurement circuit. This is uh, uh, what our S parameter is going to, uh, this is what at the bottom is what we want it to be and this is what it is right now so um, so what we're gonna have to do is for our measurement we're gonna say we're gonna put an S parameter uh, what did we measure we're gonna put that in that's uh, what we're coming from with all the losses and then we're gonna make it look like um, so we've got our S parameter file uh, the other thing is we have a viewer so we can go and quickly view that So there's a new toolbox uh, option that comes up. The Infinisim toolbox now has uh, it actually can preview these, which is kind of cool too. So you can you can actually look at what you're going to load in. Uh, that's a new addition. Um, and uh, what do we want to simulate? What we wanted to look we want it to look like an ideal through because we want to remove the effects. So we're doing that. Um, we're going to say okay, uh, and then we want to give it a name. So let's call it uh, test board two, two, D embed, and say OK, and select, and then we're going to go save transfer function. So it's going to compute that, and then it's going to apply that. So we go OK, cool. Okay, so we're going to leave that. And the other thing we have to be careful of is because, uh, you know, we, we want to limit the bandwidth because at some point this becomes a little funky. So we're going to go bandwidth limit because I know once we're beyond 12 dB of recovery, we're just boosting noise. So what we're going to do is uh, change this to, let's say, 8 gigahertz for now. 
uh, and now that looks something more reasonable but uh, it's pretty dramatic we can normalize the gain if we want to do that as well um, and uh, let me come back here and look at how much the eye has opened up so what I'm gonna do is just move the display uh, I like to do this so I can see more tab custom layout um, so we can flip between these two guys look how much the eyes opened up so essentially we're applying this this is the simulated the measured was green what we're trying to simulate is flatten it out and the transfer function that created this is boosting the signal over frequency and when we look at this the dramatic uh, changes here is quite significant um, we now um, if I can get rid of uh, oh, here's the measurements here so now we're at 88 picoseconds instead of 40 and 230 millivolts so that's pretty that's pretty powerful so that's the D embedding um, if we want to go in and just look at at what it's done to recover that so that's that's pretty significant um, we can go back if we want to now that we've created it uh, we can go back in uh, and we can remove that uh, turn it off if we want and that's what it was um, so uh, let's just uh, just sort of redo this measurement here yeah, 72 it's pretty small so that's what it was we can go back in now that we've created it you know we can have a library of these things we can turn it on so two port um, and then we can choose um, setup so if we wanted to go back in we can choose uh, if we had a library of files we can choose that right there it's already selected for us but down the road we can do that again and uh, again that's a dramatic recovery on that uh, so and that is the powerful Infinisim now you can embed files as well and apply multiple blocks and then now apply the losses um, well so but this definitely allows you to measure move your measuring point uh, closer to the pin of the device now I didn't even do this accurately um, but uh, if I had spent a little bit extra time this is just for demo purposes I could even get even better better looking uh, output